two. From the historic Hotel Del Coronado, welcome to the Reliers Podcast. I am your host, Kevin Edwards. Alongside me today, we have Sanjeev Vadva, the CEO of Life Singularity. Sanjeev, Thank pleasure to be with you today. Thank you for inviting me, Kevin. So Sanjeev, Life Singularity, I think today's theme, people, is going to be around prediction. Yeah. First question I have for you, Sanjeev, is did you ever predict that you yourself would be in this position 10 years ago today? Um, I had predicted I wanted to do a moonshot. I didn't exactly know that um, uh, what it would be and, and uh, what it would entail, but I knew I wanted to do something that would change healthcare forever. And throughout, say, let's stick with that 10-year yeah. timeline, yeah. how has technology emerged so that life singularity can really do what you set out to do? Yeah. I mean, immensely. Um, we, we had a stationary concept of health um, okay. or a concept where health would only happen when, when an acute event occurred. Um, there was no way to know where my health trajectory was going to go. Uh, it didn't matter. I mean, endemically, people kind of knew, um, you know, aging was a way to sort of say you might get unhealthy over time or your lifestyle would have some ramification on your health. But there was no technology or set of technologies available to first even capture the data of your ongoing health journey, and secondly, to be able to process that yeah, at the scale we needed to process that. And, and before pre-cloud, we were massaging millions of records of, of patients, but those projects would take us two years to clean data, to manage uh, you know, individual insights. But the insights wouldn't be real time or even close to you know, mentioning some of that. Um, what has evolved in the last, uh, at least since 2011, you know, post when the cloud started to take off that, and the av availability of devices and sensors is now we can capture this data in real time. So my ongoing context becomes near real time and, and we are able to build this insight uh, in, in a way that that was not accomplishable before. So Sanjeev, I yeah. guess for myself, yeah. I don't really notice or care about my health until something happens to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, for, you know, cancer uh, struck so many family members yeah. and so many people that we know nowadays, and yeah. it's almost very difficult to predict. How might Life Singularity's solutions and AI aggregation of data yeah. predict something as, as cancer? Yeah, so, you know, there is millions of factors that cause health or impact health, and they're not in one place. Um, it's, it's a distributed model, and, uh, and it's not in the clinic. Clinic is, or health, is 10% of my overall uh, set of lifestyles and behaviors. So if I was um, you know, living in, in Louisiana and in a poor community, my health would be probably be very different uh, and had no job, you know, it would be a very different ramification on where my journey is versus I'm in an affluent area, have health insurance, um, eat healthy, et cetera, right? So there's all of this contextual point of view. Uh, and we used to think health is local, and, but health is a lot about lifestyles and behaviors as well. So what, what we are attempting to do is capture as full a context of the individuals, a contextual AI, and, and combining that with now what's available in terms of explainable AI. So we, we take millions of factors of what might help your journey or in, interact with your journey. We reduce this information down to 100,000 features or so, which is immense to process at any individual level, which allows us to then say, and, and cancer is not, um, oncology or, or cancerous aspects are not one thing. They are multiple. Uh, aspects in your metabolism, there are multiple aspects in your overall uh, health that interact with each other. So ca capturing these interactions has been immensely difficult to do. Up until now, we were able to only capture the event when the event occurred, and, and we would use those symptoms to say, well, you have diabetes. Nobody knew diabetes could actually progress to COPD and then eventually to lung cancer, right? So if you lived in an exposure area which has a lot of exposure to pollution, for example, you might show up with a, a exacerbation in a hospital setting, and they'll treat you for asthma or they'll treat you for you know, inhalation without, because that's how they get paid. So what we have done is capture this uh, aspect through millions of factors of what might impact you, and that actually narrows where we can then begin to predict 
into your journeys. The other thing we have done is we take, we are data driven. So we know we're not taking isolated events. We take all of you as an event. And by taking all of your journeys together, now we're able to see the inter impact of all of these journeys interacting with each other. So you, maybe you came in with a diabetic event or a CHF event or you, know, you have a cancerous tissue, but underlying there might be multiple <coughs> other events also happening. So by planting this, this point of view where we can capture all of these journeys together, all of these interacting features together, we are now able to then sharpen where we can go with the prediction. Sanjeev, my grandma just got shingles. Mm. Um, and her files, I'd say back in the day, were probably all on paper. Yeah. Um, how do you collect this information? Is it something that as a user I have to do? Yeah. Or is it from the enterprise itself, yeah. the, the doctors itself that have to in, right. input this data? Explain that process to us and, and maybe some challenges that you've experienced. Yeah. So, so I, I would tell you we're not in, in paper. Right? right, we we depend on a digital uh, data uh, available to us. Now, th the building the AI doesn't require me to know about your grandmother, but once I predict using that AI, building the model requires me to take millions of de-identified patient groups, and and you know you take all of. Let's say you're interested in predicting a certain set of cancers or a certain set of uh, chronic diseases. We're taking populations that might have those, but also have other aspects of you know, what's going to cause these events, risk factors, et cetera. Mm. And, and one of the difficult problems in prediction is you, you can kind of do retrospective. So you can kind of look at, say, well, you had all of these things, so maybe you will have that. right? But prospectively predicting, which is where you had no incidence of this event ever. You, know, you just discovered shingles or you've just discovered you have mantle cell leukemia, but you never had anything like that happen to you before. So early, early onset and early catching of the, some of these diseases is where AI can help us then sort of say, you never had this before, let me go catch it for you. And, and then you have to validate this, right? So one of the ways you have to kind of go back and say, well, did we, correct, did we correctly capture this, yeah. this prediction at an individual level? And so, so our moonshot is essentially now driving this at a precision level for a individual um, rather than a population. We can do population, but it's now what you are going to experience is where we are going. I got it, I yeah. understand yeah. Okay, so yeah. um, Sanjeev, as uh, my generation, the generations after me yeah. become more familiarized with data, yeah. um, you said there's so many different factors that play into someone's health. Yeah. It's almost very, difficult to, to pinpoint all of them. Yeah. But as when we, when we think of exponential medicine, yeah. as these generations come, you know, they're being tracked and yeah. analyzed every single second, sure. do you believe there will come a day where you can track everything? I, I believe um, y you, you can track um, everything that you believe would help your health trajectory. So. And I think part of this is education, part of this is understanding where your trajectory has come from, where it might evolve to. I mean, we, we talk about genetics all the time, but genetics is only 30% of your overall health. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, your clinical interactions in a hospital or a clinic are 10% of your health. So if you don't mend or capture the other 80%, you're leaving a big pie at the table. So you know, the, when we traditionally think of health, we think of, a hospital, a clinic, I had an event, I went there. What you don't think of is, I'm at home, I'm perfectly healthy, but th there are things that could be brewing, right? So part of it is, you know, if, if, if you are on this, your, your parents had risk factors, your grandmother had risk factors, you know, so part of this is how do you take some of that prior medical history and, and just w start watching, right? So, so, and that could just be you may not have uh, the next event a few years out, right? Mm -hmm. But part of taking all of the context, maybe you need some, you know, each time we do a video visit, we may want to capture your emotional context. If you're sitting at home and you put on a biosensor, we may get your vitals context. If you're, you know, out there running and you have an Apple Watch, we may get your biometric context, right? So creating that full image or a full picture about your daily ongoing journey becomes very helpful over time to help us then begin to say, are you active? 
Is your, you know, do you eat often eat late, right? Or are you on a, on a depressive journey, right? Things of that sort. And because nobody asked the question, because nobody had the data before, now that we have data, we're not saying we have all the answers, but we have the questions you can begin to ask to say, I never even knew Kevin was a depressive or was feeling depressed right. over the last two months because nobody asked uh, Kevin about it mm. or knew to ask Kevin about it. Um, I worked with a schizophrenic um, friend who was schizophrenic over 25 years. And one of the biggest lessons they learned when I began my journey into building Life Singularity was they said, Sanjeev, if you had known that I was in my room for four days and I never left my room, uh, that I did not eat, you would have known that maybe something is off, right. off away from my, an anomaly, mm -hmm. right? If you had known that I was driving, I left my room at 2 a.m. in the morning and, and started to drive my car in the neighborhood with my eyes closed, you would have known I'm suicidal, which he was, mm -hmm. right? If you had known that I called the contact center and I wanted to seek help, but I didn't want to ask for help openly, but I was talking haltingly, I was not expressing myself, um, I was humming and hawing, these are patterns of early catchment, right? right? But because we don't care about the contact center data, we don't care about a person in their room, we leave them alone because sure. maybe they're depressed. Yeah. He said that's where you had to sort of, you could use Internet of Things. You could have known that my door did not open. You right. know that my fridge did not open. Right. Why didn't you use my contacts to figure out what questions to ask me? Maybe it was a simple knock to say, hey, Kevin, are you okay? Right. right? And that doesn't, you know, if that doesn't happen, um, then, then we can't ask the right question. So what we are prompting mm -hmm. with our platform is let's begin the journey, capturing this data, let's ask the question, maybe some are wrong, some are right, but it be begins us on this journey to get that insight, ask the next set of questions, and begin sharpening where that prediction might lead to. So that's the gap. That's the gap. That's the gap, I get that's that because yeah. myself, my parents, my yeah. grandfather especially, right. always says I'm fine. Yes, I'm fine. exactly. I'm, totally. I'm fine. It's, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be yeah, fine exactly. until that day comes where he goes, yes. "Oh, geez, you know, these he's ha showed these signs for, you know, a for long weeks, time. and they've been, and it's just something's up." You That's know, why we say hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Right, because you, your father went for a walk and suddenly he falls down, yeah. and you didn't realize that in fact that was a coagulated artery, right? Right, and then you find out that he needs a quadruple bypass. Right, um, happened to my dad and on a morning walk, right? And, and, uh, but, but these are incidents that kind of inspired me and drove me to say there's more to, there's more to the human context and until we map that context. Uh, and, and in order to map the context, I need AI mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that and then pinpoint uh, where that journey leads me to uh, is, is honing in on that prediction Mm. And then if you know that inside, can you do something about that, which is our virtual care component? Mm. Yeah, little signs. Yeah. Little signs. I, I get that a lot, yeah. you know, especially with, like, uh, I play football. I don't mm. like concussions. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I got a few concussions, and yeah. I didn't really know what it was going to be like or sure. how to describe it. Sure. Um, but I guess how to describe how I'm feeling is also a problem, too. Yes. So maybe what you're saying is, uh, by measuring stuff like the door not opening, yes. by staying in your room, by measuring your respiratory yeah. rate, your right. heart rate, yes. objectively, objectively, you can make a decision, and doctors can probably diagnose Correct. someone differently. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, is there a, a gap also with um, the human doctor in uh, the data that they're presented with? Yeah, huge gap. Um, you know, so physicians uh, take on a lot. Um, you know, it's not just about the the length of the day. So you know, if you're working 18-hour shifts, and now you have to have the mental uh, ta tenacity and sharpness about diagnosing something new, so you, you have to imagine you're always in an ER environment, multiple factors pouring in. Um, it's much like the, the day the market crashes. You have all these factors pouring in, and then you have to decide if you invest in this stock or, or sell it. And it's by the same definition, right, when you're facing a concussion, my oldest son had the concussion, and part of you know that journey is like he said, "I'm okay." Then two hours later, we knew he was not okay. Right. Um, you know, multiple events led us to he needs attention, and he was good enough himself to check himself into an hospital. Right. Mm. But 
the point being, if he wasn't that self-aware, and he had not taken that step, we would be looking at a very different outcome mm. for us. And, and so part of um, what we are making you do is not just self-quantization, it's, it's about self-awareness, mm. right? So that's one. I think the physician, physician comes in your, uh, you know, aspect of care for those few minutes. Um, and they are, they are trained to look for anomalies. Right? They're not trained to look for the 90% of your context. That's why social determinants of health is, is hugely uh, useful because now we can say uh, maybe the intervention is not clinical. Maybe the intervention is you need the nearest food bank or maybe the intervention is you don't have shelter and, and you need a home instead. Right? So part of what, what we are drawing attention to is you discharge this patient. You knew he was a homeless patient. You discharge him with uh, a drug for diabetes. He's out on the streets. Guess what's going to happen? Three days later, he's back in the hospital setting uh, just to you know, have a bed available or you know, to feign something else. Right? So w the physician has to decide how to t take a look at all of these factors. So there's a huge gap. They can't measure millions of factors. They, they are trained to look for certain things. And so what we are offering in our platform is the ability to take these millions of factors, narrow them down to 50 or so that really meaning, are meaningful in your journey, and then further reduce that to five facts that the physician needs to know right then and there. And so that allows us to help with the physician burden, help them with the insight of what's, they can go and look at all of the other uh, data aspects, but it's, it's sharpening what they need to know now to help work with you. Right, and then provide them uh, before I even come to that clinic or to that hospital, I can begin to stream my contacts to them. Mm -hmm. I could do a virtual triage with our avatars. So, you know, uh, Ellie, our avatar, would ca cap capture all of my data. And she said, Sanjeev was compliant this entire month, took his food, took his meds, you know, but still has gained some weight. So some, now the anomaly is something else. Mm -hmm. And it may just be so you need to walk 10,000 steps a day rather than get on these diet pills, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's how we're trying to help the physician side of things. It's, it's present the framework of what they need to know, become the assistant in how they measure things. And if we made a wrong recommendation, a wrong prediction, or a influenced a wrong judgment on their end, we record that in our blockchain, and that then gets fed back into our AI to relearn uh, from that incident, mm. right? So, so it's it's a continual process of ongoing learning. Yeah, scalable and efficient. I scalable, efficient, describe that. and and admit your mistakes and build on that. So Sanjeev, almost every example you provided me with today um, has been either a personal yeah. uh, situation. Yeah. Um, and in, the thing I love about coming to a conference like this, yeah. everyone's working to save lives, yeah. essentially. Yeah, sure. Um, have you found that you, I mean, guess, would you describe your work as having a purpose in life, and, and how has that yeah. um, helped grow your business? Uh, I mean, I, I guess, yeah. helped your motivation towards going to work every day? No, it is, um, you know, you, as an entrepreneur, you have a couple of choices to make. One is, you know, you want to uh, set up a, a business where revenue is your only driver, uh, and you measure, put your metrics around something like that. Um, another purpose might be that you're trying to change, you, you're a platform for social change, and you're bringing about uh, a, a purpose where it is patient centricity. Um, and true patient centricity, um, you know, it doesn't mean you don't want to profit, you do want to create because otherwise you can't sustain. Right. Um, uh, so the, the purpose that drives me, uh, or what drove me was, um, you know, my mother was leukemic, had multiple issues. And I always saw in her journey, it wasn't, you know, it may have been the genetics, but it was all the other things, right? So part of what, what I began this journey with is, you know, can I help bring change to, you know, a large scale change to hundreds of millions of people? Um, and if, if you lead with the purpose, then the permissioned access to data becomes very easy because mm -hmm. in, I'm in it for you, right? right? And, and that, that equation then allows me to, you know, it's been enormously helpful because I put my history out there, I put, you know, my, I'm doing this for the purpose of helping you as a patient. And because our platform can now get to you, just precision about you, uh, that, that, that uh, journey, the, the virtual avatar then just learns your history. 
mm. and communicates with you. Right. So, so where we go with this is we are in it to bring um, where we can help patients, and if we can help with your holistic uh, journey as as a, as a patient, then it's not just about me being the right diabetic intervention. Or I, you know, so so digital health has a landscape has thousands of interventions, but they're all single point interventions. Got it. We wanted to be a platform, as a business model, we wanted to be a platform that could begin with, let's say, one or two uh, aspects. As a business, you may decide to say, okay, you know, this AI can do X, but then expand that AI into multiple business models. So we offer companies a platform to grow forever. It's infinite uh, modalities, um, and it's infinite choices of what you could bring to your patient. But, so not just the insight, but to do something with that insight. Right. So, so bringing together the ecosystem of if I can predict, then I can preempt, and if I can preempt, then I can prevent. Right? Got it, and that's the formula. That's the formula. You, maybe it's one of the reasons, a reason why a business will work with you, because yeah. you're trying to help predict the, you know, their Correct. health. Help, Correct, you know, And that, yeah. that idea of that purpose yes. is maybe what would draw you know, uh, your service versus another's. Correct. Um, Sanjeev, we would consider that leadership. You know, people want to follow you. you because of the things that you're doing, not just to, like yeah. you said, for the bottom line. Yeah. Uh, so Sanjeev, the last question I ask you uh, is, what is your definition of a real leader? So I think um, leadership uh, requires um, ability to sustain um, knowing that you're walking in it for the long haul, irrespective of uh, many of the consequences that are going to come with you. So if you're not true to yourself and you're not true to your story and your belief of why you're getting into this, then maybe that's not the right mixture or potion mm. uh, because there will be immense number of dark days. Uh, there will be you know, immense amount of uh, skepticism that comes your way. And you have to constantly remind yourself uh, that you are on this journey for a reason, and that reason hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So maybe a customer uh, doesn't like your demo, or maybe they didn't believe that it was accomplished uh, uh, in a certain way. Um, you, you have to learn to then say, well, I can brush that aside, or I can treat, the, treat their skepticism as a way to collaborate and say, let me show you, right? Work with me and I'll show mm -hmm. you. So that's, that uh, actually has helped uh, the attitude you take as an entrepreneur to be able to define to yourself why are you in it, the purpose that leads you, and then, you know, hopefully people believe in that purpose and they'll engage with you regardless of uh, where you are in your journey. So if they believe you're you're a late stage company and then they can take you to the next two levels up, they can help you become exponential. Uh, then they'll engage with you that way uh, because you've aligned on purpose. Uh, if they uh, b believe that you're very early stage and you need to go through a couple more steps, they put you on their watch list. So regardless, I have achieved uh, getting on, on their purpose, right? Whatever they're willing to engage in, how they're willing. See, it's a free format. You, you may be able to do something for me for 10 cents. Another person may be able to do something for me for 110 cents. And I allow, because it's a platform for engagement, and, and we allow engagement in any way. So if you contribute a cent or you contribute 100 cents, all, all inputs are welcome, right? And, and that's, that's actually my one, uh, because I started late in, in my uh, life right. to, to be an entrepreneur. But I think one of the lessons learned was that you, you need to walk in, because our conversations that we're having with C-suite, for example, you have to show that you've you know, put your experience to work. You, you, you've kind of anticipated some of the risks and questions, which if you, uh, you know, a lot of 26-year-old companies, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who are very young and very, you know, shape things, I'm not as probably half as smart as them, uh, but I think they, they have time. They, they, you know, they have time to engage and, and uh, make mistakes and learn. So I think do that. We should do that. Um, when, when you are coming in from a, a different perspective, we, we have our uh, engagement and experience of what has failed before, what didn't succeed, and that's what I used. I said precision medicine was not the answer uh, in my point of view, and I said I needed precision health as the model, and so that's the model we built, and, and we have skeptics out there, and we have 
great supporters out there and all, all feedback is good. Sanjeev, uh, we're glad you're uh, sharing your experiences with uh, yeah. us as well as letting us join you on your yeah. path uh, oh, thank of you. leadership thank you, and on Kevin. this journey. So, Jeeve, we yeah. talked about a lot today. Yeah. Uh, talked about prediction. Yeah. Prediction of AI and technology yeah. emerging with health. Yeah. Um, how your platform aggregates this data, shared a couple of stories about your yeah. friends with schizophrenia, and where that gap is, and yeah. how humans have the confidence and may, maybe not the self-awareness to know that yeah. they maybe have, they, they might have a disease or Correct. something Correct. that could be easily predict. Right. Thank you for your time here Absolutely. on the Relius Podcast. Yeah. For Sanjeev uh, Vadva, I'm Kevin Edwards asking you to go out there, find your path early and ride that wave. And folks, lastly, always keep it real. Thanks, That's it. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you for the time. Thank you.